Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a closer look at the system matrix. Now it turns out that in the previous video we showed you what that looks like for a single thick lens, but quite often lenses are put into lens systems or what we call compound lenses. Here an example, we have three lenses glued together and or held together. You don't want to put some material in there that would mess up the rays going through the lens system so you want to put them together make sure you have clean boundaries between them but here nevertheless we have three lenses and so in this case the system matrix represents all the matrices required to calculate what happens to an incoming ray so that we have the information as it exits the last boundary on the last lens again we need to know the angle relative to the horizontal and the height either above or below the optical axis here you can see that in order to accomplish that, we have to have the refracting matrix on the first boundary, the transition matrix between the first and the second boundary, the refracting matrix across the second boundary, the transfer matrix from the second to the third boundary, the refracting matrix across the third boundary, the transfer matrix from the third to the fourth boundary, and then finally the refracting matrix across the fourth boundary. The system matrix simply represents the multiplication of all of these matrices in such a way that we can write it into a compact form right here where we can see that the outcoming ray, the ray that goes across the last boundary, it transmits across boundary number four is equal to the ray of the incoming, or I should say the incoming ray that contains information about the rays that enters the compound lens system multiplied times the system matrix. Now, if you imagine again that each of these matrices are two by two matrices, and even the system matrix is a two by two matrix, and here are the elements of the two by two matrix, it turns out that this element right here, A12, has a special meaning. This matrix is equal to the negative of the inverse of the effective focal length of the compound lens system. So therefore, we can say that the focal length or the effective focal length of the compound lens system is equal to minus 1 over the element A12. This is assuming that the index of refractions on both sides of the lens are equal to one another. What if they are not? Well, if they're not, if n is different on both sides of the compound lens, so that these two are not equal to one another, then this element A12 is equal to the negative of the index of refraction on the incident side divided by the effective focal length on the object side or we can say it's equal to the negative of the index of refraction on the transmit side divided by the effective focal length on the image side of the lens. So that means that the effective focal length on both sides of the lens would not be the same because we have different indices of refraction on both sides of the compound lens system. At least now we have a better understanding what we mean by the system matrix, how it's calculated on the previous video, and the meaning of this particular element relative to the effective focal length of the lens, or in this case the compound lens system.